I want the students to understand the following. What is the difference between a vector quantity and a scalar quantity? You all know this, isn't that so? Yes. So a vector quantity has magnitude and dimension. And you'll find the scalar quantity has simply magnitude. Correct. I am talking nothing about DC machine. I'm just dealing with this kind of thing. So if I look at a vector, I'm going to take three scenarios. Scenario number one, I have a block of wood subjected to a force of A. Scenario number two, I'm going to take the same block of wood and I'm going to subject it to a force of A. Scenario number three, I'm going to take the same block of wood and this time I'm going to subject it to a force. So in the case of the first die, what is force A going to do for us? It's going to move the block from the left to the right. How do you know that? How do you know that? Why is it not going to go in the opposite direction? Because the direction of the force is telling me that the force is acting towards the right. In the case of the second diagram, you'll find that that vector, if it is acting through the center of gravity of the object, the object will just stop itself. Can you go to the left or right? No. What's going to happen in the third case? So two things are going to happen, right? Now remember two things. What are the two things? The block will move to the right and it will partially the block. That's what we part. Why do you think force C is doing two things, but forces A and B can only do one thing each? A is an angle of zero degrees. B is an angle of ninety degrees. So why is C doing two things? Because it is an inclined force. Right? Now you will tell the candidate. All incline or decline forces, they have two components. As a matter of fact, all forces have two components. So now you are going to say, this here is the vertical component, that is the horizontal component. Alright? Can you see that this has a vertical component? What's the vertical component? Zero. That's why it can't move. Can you see this has a horizontal component? Zero. It can't move. But here, the DC, the vertical component is responsible for lifting the block. What is the horizontal component responsible for? Do you all understand that? Yes. Now, if I take an example like this, here's a block of wood which is being pulled. Yeah. All right. In that, all right, let, let me say it's being pushed because I want to demonstrate. A simple concept. This block of wood is. Uh, <laughs> That's still amazing. You see, I'm just used to it. So there's a block of wood A, which is being pushed. Right? If I now put in a force in this direction here, can you see because the forces are acting in opposite directions, they will tend to cancel the effect of each other? So if this force B is equal magnitude to A, the block will come to rest. Yes. Correct. But can you see, the block cannot lift up the surface. Mm -hmm. If I take the same scenario, here is force A, but now, you see, what is going to happen? Force B is an Incline force. It has two components. Let me go and draw the components in. That's the vertical component. That is the horizontal component. What is the horizontal component going to do? It's going to oppose force A. 